How does wattage relate to temperature in soldering irons, and how much wattage or temperature do I really need for a given application? To get a feel for this question, I've attached what are essentially thermometers to the tips of three inexpensive, unregulated Radio Shack irons, a 15 watt, 25 watt, and 40 watt. They're actually thermocouples that are secured with high thermal conductivity cement. I'm going to be soldering a couple components and also tinning several different size wires to see how different wattages fare and also what happens to the tip temperature. There are a couple factors that may lead to slightly inaccurate comparisons of the tip temperatures. The thermocouples may not be in direct contact with the tip, and they have a degree or so of inaccuracy by themselves, but it's fairly likely that we're within 5 degrees Fahrenheit, and that should be good enough for our purposes. Ice water measured about 33 degrees Fahrenheit. The first thing to note is that each of the irons has a substantially different resting temperature. The 15 watt iron peaked at about 540 degrees Fahrenheit, the 25 watt reached over 670 degrees, and the 40 watt went past 740 degrees. On the pricier temperature controlled irons usually found in soldering stations, heat delivery is automatically throttled to maintain a set temperature, and their wattage rating only indicates a maximum power output, not temperature. But as you can see, for unregulated irons, higher wattages do indeed lead to higher temperatures. Let's start off soldering a 16 pin dip chip with the 15 watt iron. Starting at about 505 degrees, I immediately lose 20 degrees just cleaning off the tip with a damp sponge, and then each joint drops the temperature a little bit more. But even after 8 joints and with the iron at 450 degrees, I still have little trouble heating the joints enough for solder to adhere to them. As I continue soldering, the temperature gets down to about 420 degrees, but doesn't stray too far below that. It's hard to tell from this video, but I actually have to wait a second or two before the iron heats the joint enough to melt the solder and then I have to continue heating the part for another second or so to allow the solder to spread out and sufficiently adhere to the surfaces. It's slower than I'm used to working, but I don't ever have to stop. Most of the time I would set the iron down every few joints anyway, and this would give it time to recover. Desoldering with copper braid also works fine. The joints come out looking just like they would with a higher temperature iron, shiny with surfaces that smoothly connect to the pad and component lead. So for small components, the 15 watt iron works fine, but may require some patience if you have a lot of soldering to do. So what can't you solder with a 15 watt iron? Let's try tinning some 14 gauge stranded copper wire. The temperature immediately dives down towards 400 degrees, and it becomes difficult to melt solder anywhere except right next to the iron. Furthermore, the solder repeatedly freezes to the wire. While I might be able to eventually tin this gauge of wire, after 30 seconds coverage is partial at best. Moving on to the 25 watt iron, I have no problem soldering the dip chip leads. Starting at over 670 degrees Fahrenheit, the temperature is still higher than 620 after 16 leads. Even after holding the iron directly against this chip's heat sink for 30 seconds, the iron remains as hot as the 15 watt iron was at its peak. The 14 gauge wire tins easily. The 12 gauge is doable, but requires a bit more patience. The 25 watt iron hits a bit of a wall with the 10 gauge wire. While it's possible to cover the wire after some 2 minutes, with that amount of time I've essentially baked the entire wire, melting the insulation between the clamps lately. One goal of soldering is to only heat the parts that are contained in the connection and keep everything else cool. A higher wattage or higher temperature iron may actually help keep parts cooler because it can heat the connection area faster than the heat can spread. The 40 watt iron barely flinches as I solder the dip chip, and I'm able to work almost three times faster than I could with the 15 watt iron, which was operating at 450 degrees and not 700 degrees. As a side note, most professional soldering shops set their irons between 650 and 750 degrees Fahrenheit. Since most standard tin lead solder alloys melt below 375 degrees, and even lead free alloys melt below 450 degrees, you might find it surprising that iron temperatures are so high. In most cases though, I believe these higher temperatures are used just to enable faster work. The downside to higher temperatures, however, includes wearing out the tips faster, having more risk of overheating parts, and also not being able to use some weaker so-called no-clean fluxes that break down in the higher temperatures before they can even clean the joint. The 40 watt iron easily tins both the 14 gauge and the 12 gauge wires, but even it has some difficulty with the 10 gauge wire. If you're going to be soldering lots of wires of that size, you may want upwards of 60 watts. One final tip, cleaning the soldering tip before each joint and keeping it from oxidizing by covering the tip with solder in between joints can do more to make soldering easier than having more power or temperature in many cases.